Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mark back in the living room today on Mark's Aquatics. So I thought I'd give you a little update on the Evo. And here it is, it's looking absolutely gorgeous. Now the green star polyps, as you can see on the sides there, have gone absolutely bananas. They're growing up the glass this side, across the bottom, all the way going across here as well. I'm gonna have to trim all this off down here, but I'll show you how I do that in a little while, okay? Because obviously it will just keep growing all the way. It's growing all the way along the back there, which is awesome. I'm gonna let it cover all the way across there and, um, and look brilliant after some time. What else have we got in here to show you? We've got that lovely photosynthetic uh, gagonian there, which is doing extremely well. That's put out loads of new little fingers. And the bubble tip anemones that you can see down in the right hand corner there, that little guy there, there's another one around the back there. One split off and went running all the way around the back and he's up there now. So he's happy. Everything else is happy. The fan worm is doing absolutely awesome. Looking great as usual. The turbo snails have been breeding like crazy and they're letting out loads of eggs and and melt into the water and making it all cloudy. That's why if you can see, it actually isn't crystal clear at the moment because of these little guys. They come up to the surface, they get in the current and then they release all that into the tank as well. And you know, lots of little baby turbo snails appearing all over the place after a few weeks, which is quite interesting. You see them all over the glass. What else is new? We've got a new little patch of pulsing xenia down here now i'm going to remove that because that will start growing up the glass and being a right pain there i want to keep it on the rock also there's another piece there as well another one there that little piece of priscilla pora at the back there that little skeleton didn't make it in there um, i'm not sure what happened to that piece sometimes you do lose them and it's through no reason of your own it's every all the levels are fine everything's perfect but these things suddenly they'll just have little tissue necrosis it's called and they'll just die off and let everything go and that's just the way of it you, I mean I've known people spend a lot of money on corals and this to literally happen to them overnight and it's um, it's not much fun when you're spending out that kind of money on corals the zoas are looking beautiful we got all those spider-mans we got all the volcanoes at the back they're all doing well and that lovely big sand flower anemone just in there I'll give you some close-ups of that in a while as well it's only early in the morning so it's not a lot um, so things are still really opening up and looking good. Now, if you want to buy one of these tanks, guys, I'll leave a I'll leave a link in the, the description down below, okay? And you can you can pop in there and click on that. Obviously, I'm affiliated with Amazon, so it does help me out a little tiny bit if you buy it through Amazon and get it delivered to you. And um, that I sure would appreciate that. But they're fantastic little tanks. Um, I know a lot of you guys out there have bought them after watching this. And they're having great fun doing them up and putting the corals in them and everything else and, uh, and trying to replicate what, what I've got going here as well. And, uh, and you will if you're patient. You've got to be patient. Keep your hands out the tank. Put things where you want them and just let them grow over time, okay? Yes, that rose bubble anemone is absolutely stunning. It really is. Now, another little thing I'm going to do today now is put a pair, one of my old pair, which some of you guys who are regular watchers of the uh, of my channel will know them a lovely pair of um, Ocellaris clowns I'm gonna put in here I did have the Bangai Cardinals in here but one of them decided to just disappear I don't know where it went and they were we were gonna well I was gonna try and breed them in here for you but um, sadly that's not gonna materialize now I'm gonna have to look for another for another female I think and the male is back into in back in the coral room so I thought it'd be nice for the um, for the clownfish to come in here and they can host that anemone or the other one around the back there where they split into two. But this photosynthetic gorgonian is absolutely stunning, it really is. When I put the, the coral food in the water, you can see all those little tiny, little little hands as I, as I call them, grabbing the bits out of the water column and eating them. Zoas are doing fantastic. That big chunk of pulsing xenia there is going to have to go, like I said. Got a naughty little Aptasia in there, but we've got those Aptasia eating nudibranchs in there, and they've eaten quite a lot of them. And they're still going to work on them as well. I so say they're not a problem, Aptasia, as long as you don't mind them. Um, they can be, you know, they can get they can get in between zoas. And when they get in between a zoa, there's one there. Look, if you look, I'll try and get in there. See that little guy there? There's two actually. And they just pop out in between. You can get some stuff, either Joe's Juice or, um, I'm not sure if it's Aptasia X, and you can just put a little dab of that in each one and that'll just that'll kill it off in no time at all. 
they do they just annoy coals and there's another one there yep I'm gonna have to get in there and do that but it's not it's not often that I have to do it another one up in the glass there but these things do come in with corals that sunflower anemone is absolutely beautiful look at that absolutely stunning that one we got the Monty Pora at the back there the plating Monty he's decided he's gonna stick to the glass and make his way and slime his way up the glass and send out other little plates as well and you'll find they'll do this and they'll keep going out and out and you end up with a lovely swirling pattern over time I do like that yes the green star polyps have nearly completely covered those duck bills up there now those returns from the pump you can just see there the little slip in the middle of the screen there where the water comes in and the other one is just right in the center of the screen there now you can see but it's literally covered it and all these little new little tongues you can see coming out which is what happens with the green star polyps they'll slide along the glass but then suddenly they'll just put out another another longish piece and if I can find one for you and it will stay quite rigid and it will grow straight out and if it touches anything else it'll stick to that and start growing over that as well there's my little mate absolutely gorgeous he's got another little friend there look it's just started on the back little tiny baby tube worm got some recordia humors in there as well we've got some more this side as well let me show you those guys lots of little bugs in the glass these little copepods oops yeah look at the little copepods in the glass now they're great for the tank because when the clownfish go in there they'll be picking those little guys off okay guys i've just acclimated or acclimatized as I keep getting corrected from our British public. Is um, I'm gonna go and get the uh, the clownfish now. I've been a, I've been acclimatizing them. Right, they're all accl acclimated now in the net outside. I'm gonna bring them in now and put them in the tank so you guys can watch them go in. Okay. Here they come. And there they go look at that now I absolutely love these two I've had them for many many years and they've been in various aquariums they've been in an eight foot tank they've been in a six foot tank they've been in all different kinds of tanks and they are absolutely gorgeous they're a breeding pair they breed literally once they've settled in here they'll be laying eggs every two weeks and bringing on a clutch probably around the back somewhere and um, I've bred many, many babies from these two. They're absolutely gorgeous pair. And they're probably around nine years old now, I would have thought, maybe even ten. Just doing their little, re-establishing their little bond there. You can see them going next to each other and just flicking away. Just to say, I'm still here, love. I'm still here. I haven't gone anywhere. We're still together. And they're absolute stars. They really are. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I could watch these two all day and I thought that was what I was going to, I thought I'll bring them back in here because I have missed them. They've been out in the coral room and I used to have them in other tanks always watching them. And they're a great little, little fish to watch and interact with, they really are. They're happy. Yep, and I've decided now this is it now. I'm not going to do anything else with this little tank, I'm just going to let it go. This is going to be their, their little forever home. And um, I don't think I'm going to get another pair of those bangos. If I come across a couple in one of the shops, I'll, put, I'll buy them up and I'll breed them in one of the other little tanks that I've got in the workshop. I think I'll do it in there. But uh, these guys deserve a forever home. And I've messed around with them too, too much, I think, and over the years. You've seen them breed. You've seen them do all kinds. And um, but at least now they're going to have a little settled in home here. And they can live out their little lives nice and happy in this little tank. Which they're absolutely going to love in here when they get their territories all marked out and things and find their little breeding spot they'll clean it up get it nice and clean and then they'll deposit all those eggs actually I'll show you I got my Clarkies in the shed and they are sorry in the coral room and they are breeding yet again and they've just laid a huge big carpet of eggs so I'll nip in there quick and I'll show you what's been going on in that tank here you go guys there's a little pair of Clarkies Martin, if you're watching, they're at it again. I've got these up guy called Martin. He comes around and has a coral off me once in every once in a while. He comes around. It was nice to see him. 
again the other day up in the post office so there they are mate they're at it again look at that another big carpet of eggs hundreds of them there this time I've got to up the pump in here as well because we're getting a little bit of algae which is not too bad because we get all the baby micro life in here as well which is beneficial for the babies when they do hatch we could get a couple survive I'm not going to go I'm not actually going to try and save any of these this time because they do this every every two weeks they're breeding the same as well so um but if you get some rotifers and things and you get a nice little some nice green water going with some rotifers in there breed some of them up you'll bring a lot of these through and it's an interesting and it's a rewarding little thing to do as well i thoroughly enjoyed doing it over the years we've got another one of the babies down here look now that's the pair that we just showed you in the living room that's one of their babies that we had when we bred a while back i've kept him as well he's a fantastic little guy oh never well Look at that, I just moved them out of their pot to go in there and I've just noticed they had a, quite a few babies in there as well. Now, the power head is actually blowing on them, as you can see, they're moving, which is good. And they look like they're going to hatch very, very shortly. So, with there being tons of Calerpa in here, we may actually get a couple of those out, which will be interesting. Well, I didn't realise that when I took them out, the sneaky little monkeys and deposited some eggs. Hello you, he's a beauty, he's just the image of his parents, he really is, absolutely gorgeous. There's always something going on in this workshop, or in the other side, always keeping busy doing stuff, making videos for you guys, and if you like these little videos, give me a thumbs up, I really would appreciate it, and if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button, and that notification bell, and click on all notifications, and you'll be... Uh, You'll be reminded then with a little ding on your computer every time I upload a video, okay? Look at that, absolutely stunning, they really are. Now this tank down here has just got Calerpa growing in it. That's it, nothing else. Few little corals kicking around. Few little starfish. But I've got those Aptasia eating nudibranchs in here as well. And that's why there's no Aptasia in here at all. So I'm gonna have to go through this and your tank as well because they're in here as well as you can see there's no there's none in there now there's quite a lot of as you can see the aptasia up here aptasia anemones but there's absolutely none down there or in there because they've all been eaten which is fantastic news so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to have a look around see if i can find any and um and i'll put some up here as well so they can have a go at those and breed a few more it's quite it's quite strange because they seem to breathe, but you never see them. And these little, these little anemones just disappear. And it doesn't. They don't seem to. They have hundreds of eggs, but I think the um, the sea fleas and all the other things that are in here as well must. They must eat them as well because we we don't get many through. We get a couple of adults, but um, in each tank. But the, a lot of the babies don't seem to survive for some reason. It's a bit strange. <laughs> Hello mum, proud mum and dad, look at that, massive big clump of pulsing xenia here in my coral room, look at that, some of you guys wanted to see, I'm really low on stock at the moment, I'll just show you some of the zoanthids that I've got, little colonies there, some stunning colours, all the way along there, some of them are sold, but we've still got some that are up for sale i've got to put a few more up as well or if you see anything that you want on here get in touch with me and i'll post them out for you what else have we got we've got some nice little acros in there some gorgeous um little weeds and things growing on that piece there's some stunning coralline algae on there as well got some lovely starburst um mushrooms there some lovely ultra green ones there Montipora cups as well, some of that plate in Monty, some little Acroporas, different types. Got a little bit of algae in this one at the moment. And when you get algae in your tank like that, it means that that Rofos needs changing. What have we got in this one? We've got some big colonies in here. Some big uh, toxic green cabbage corals, mushroom corals, toadstool corals. Some of my skulls with aquapora on that they stuck on their heads a while back they're growing like crazy those there's another one there as well with a mohican of aquapora 
I'll just shut the lights off and I'll show you from the uh, from the top with the pumps off so you can have a, have a look under the blue lights as well because that looks absolutely stunning at night. Boom, there you go guys, look at that lot. Some absolutely beautiful pieces in there. We've got some lovely big Zoa colonies at the back there. Now these are these are big, as you can see from the size of my hand there. They're quite big colonies. Got a lovely big acro colony there and there. Some beautiful pinks, volcanoes. Now all these are for sale, guys. There's a massive carpet there of uh, GSP. Different type that one, that's more of the mint green one. Where's my skulls? There he is. <laughs> but we got all kinds, we've got different types here. There's some mint green one there with some ultra little piece on that as well. Some beautiful rock volcanoes there as well. Massive cabbage coral. There's a big guy. Some big uh, colony of spider mans there. We've got some more different GSP over there, some recordias, we've got some mixed Zoa colonies, these are absolutely stunning, look at those guys, huge Superman colony on the right hand side there, we've got some mixed ones, some greens and volcanoes, some different types of acros, montes, Priscillapora, we've got lots and lots of the green pallies at the back as well, Another one there with some zoas on. Lots and lots of nice little sweets in this shop, I tell you that now. And we'll go across now. Some of the greens actually, they don't do it justice. I mean, that is absolutely gorgeous in the daylight um, coloration. It really is. As are those lovely big, uh, those ricks as well. Actually, I think they're redactors, I think. They could be. Too many things, lovely little baby acro there, there's that, we well, can't see that at all under the blue lights, but now I'll go on to these zoas, look at those. These are absolutely beautiful, so like I said, some of them are sold. If you want to get in touch with me, um, you can always private message me. If you can go on, you can go on to my, um, onto my Facebook page, Mark's Aquatics, and you can send me a DM there. If you want anything from here, and I'll pack it up and post it out to you and give you a price on it, okay? But I've got all these here for sale. Look at those. Absolutely beautiful little bits. So that's what's been going on. I'll try and get you a, a nicer shot. That's the whole sort of setup that I've got here at the moment. Obviously, you've got all the, the reactors and everything and the skimmers and things down in the bottom here. And all my lighting up the top. And my little Mark's Aquatic sign that I made a long, long time ago. Now my laser cutter. I must get that thing out and start doing some more on it again as well. Really enjoyed that. Yes, guys, some stunning little bits of coral. There really is some nice bits in here. Sometimes I just think, just get another big eight foot tank mark and stick it all back in there and create another amazing reef again. But it's such an expensive hobby to get into. And I'm not a rich man, so it's going to take a long time to get another big tank like that back up and running again with all the stuff that you need to put in it. But I might get there one day. I might do it again one day. You never know. Who knows? Look at that. There's a nice thumbnail. <laughs> Let's go and see what the other guys are up to in the little Evo. Well, there they are, whizzing around again. Very, very happy. It won't be long before they'll, I bet you, within 24 hours, they'll be down in there, rooting around in it, Getting their little, wiggling their little bums in there, just so they can they can form that symbiotic relationship with it, and that'll be their new little anemone. And then they'll be probably going underneath that cave somewhere there. That's what I predict. And cleaning a bit of rock off, and laying hundreds of eggs in there for future generations of Nemo's. Look at that. Anyway, guys, 20 minutes has passed. As quick as that. I don't think I'm going to trim that back. I might do that in another video because I've just put these guys in and I completely forgot about doing that. I should have done that before. So I'm not going to stress them out by sticking my hands in there and little blades and things chopping bits off. So I'm going to win that one there. Happy, happy little clownfish. Anyway, guys, as always, you're all stars. Love you loads. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you. I think it's on Sunday for the next edition of... 
the native marine tank the new one that's going to be interesting that tune in for that one bye for now